Hey everyone, welcome to Plant-Based Kidney Health. My name is Michelle Krosmer and I am a renal dietitian and I'm doing this short episode solo today just to go over um, some common myths that I always hear about surrounding potassium and kidney disease. So I'm going to give you three myths and we're going to dive into each one and what the actual truth is about them. Um, myth number one is I oftentimes hear people say, I have kidney disease, so therefore I have to restrict my potassium intake. And that is just simply not true. First of all, people have um, various types of kidney disease, different stages of kidney disease. Everyone with kidney disease has different labs. Um, so it really truly is individualized and you want to make sure that you know your labs and then you're adjusting your potassium intake according to that. So um, Dr. Hashmi explained in a, actually one of our previous two episodes on potassium. So definitely check those out after you watch this video, because we dive in depth into what can cause high blood potassium levels, but it can either be because potassium is shifting from inside of our cells to the outside of our cells, causing blood potassium levels to be elevated, or it can be because we're, our kidneys are having um, difficulty getting rid of excess potassium in the body. And so knowing that those are the two most common causes of high potassium, some people with kidney disease have absolutely no problems controlling their potassium levels. And it's important to remember too, that usually we see higher blood potassium levels or more difficulty controlling blood potassium levels in, um, you know, when the GFR drops below 30 or sometimes below 20. And that's oftentimes where we see it. But again, whether someone has early stage kidney disease or late stage kidney disease, it doesn't mean that they have to restrict potassium if their blood levels are completely fine. You're looking at your trend in your labs and they continue to be normal. Um, the other thing kind of surrounding this myth is, you know, people will be told, okay, you have kidney disease. They go online, they Google what to eat, and then they find all this information saying, okay, now you have to restrict potassium. And again, surrounding that, it's important to remember that it's going to come down to your individual lab. So please keep that in mind. Don't restrict potassium if you don't need to. It's actually not beneficial. Potassium doesn't harm your kidneys. Um, it doesn't accelerate progression of kidney disease. Foods that are rich in potassium can actually help to lower blood pressure, which can actually in turn help to protect your kidney function. So restrict potassium if you need to, if your blood levels indicate that and your doctors told you, hey, your blood potassium levels are high, you need to limit it. But otherwise, if you... Um, have kidney disease, it doesn't mean you automatically need to restrict potassium and it's not going to be beneficial unless you actually need to restrict it. Uh, myth number two. So myth number two is um, people often say, I'm on a potassium restricted diet, so I can't eat any high potassium foods. And I think the number one thing that I want people to know is that you have choices in what you eat. And a big part of it comes down to the portion and the volume and the frequency that you're consuming because low potassium foods eaten in very large quantities can add up to be very high in potassium. So a couple examples I'll give you. One is bananas, right? Bananas are a high potassium food. They're often on that high potassium food list to avoid. And blueberries are a low potassium food and they are on that green light list of foods to eat with kidney disease. Um, if you have about two cups of blueberries, that's the equivalent potassium to about half of a large banana. So really it comes down to what fruit do you like? What portion are you consuming? Because if you eat an entire large banana, that's going to be very high in potassium. If you have half of a banana and you're doing it because, you know, because you love bananas and you're doing it in place of the berries, then that's always your choice and your option. Now, when caveat to that that I do want to say is that we want people eating more fruits and vegetables, more produce, more whole plant foods in general, because that's very protective for the kidneys. So if you are on a restricted potassium diet, then ideally choosing more of those lower potassium fruits and veggies for the bulk of your diet is going to be good because it allows you to eat in you know larger quantities of food and larger quantities of fruits and vegetables. But it doesn't mean if you love banana, you can never eat banana. Um, a couple other examples. One is avocado. 
Avocado is a high potassium food. A quarter of an avocado, a quarter of a medium of avocado is about 170 to 175 milligrams of potassium. That's a doable low to moderate amount of potassium. Now, if you sat there and you ate half a cup of guacamole, that's over 400 milligrams of potassium and therefore very high in potassium. So again, it comes down to that portion. And another common food that we often hear this with is, oh, I can't eat nuts because nuts are high in potassium. So first of all, again, sound like a broken record, but the portion matters. One ounce of nuts or about one quarter cup of nuts is one standard serving. And so if you are sticking with that serving, you can help keep the potassium level low in the diet. Um, but the other thing is there's low potassium nuts. So walnuts, pecans, macadamia nuts, those are all lower in potassium. For one ounce, walnuts have about 125 milligrams of potassium. Your pecans are about 116 milligrams of potassium. And then macadamia nuts are about 104 milligrams of potassium. And again, that's for a one ounce portion. So ultimately with everything, if you've been told, you know, hey, you're on this potassium restricted diet, it doesn't mean no potassium. It just means low potassium. And that could be usually anywhere 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams of potassium, but there's still room for higher potassium foods. It really just comes down to the portion and the frequency that you're consuming it and then what else you're eating in your diet. Okay. Myth number three that I hear all the time is that cooking um, leafy greens like spinach increases the potassium content of the leafy green. So this is just, it's simply not true. It's not that, okay, I have this cup of spinach. Now I cook it and now it's suddenly higher in potassium. It's that, you know, if you take a cup of raw spinach, that's around 167 milligrams of potassium and you cook it down, you're really only going to get, it cooks down so much that you only get about one to two tablespoon portion that still remains around 160 milligrams of potassium. Where people fall into trouble is that if they um, eat a cup of cooked spinach, that is over 800 milligrams of potassium, and that's very high in potassium. But you don't take a cup of raw spinach and then get a cup of cooked spinach. You have to cook like eight cups of raw spinach to get about one cup of cooked spinach. So that's why there's such a big difference. So that's important to keep in mind. Again, leafy greens, yes, spinach, regardless of whether it's cooked or raw, is a higher potassium leafy green. But if you love spinach and you want one cup raw and you want to throw it into your vegetable saute or your stir fry, um, or you want to put a little bit on your pizza that you're making at home or throw it into a soup, then that's totally doable. What you want to avoid is cooking an entire container of spinach, which is going to cook down in this tiny amount. And then you eat that full amount. That's very high in potassium. And then again, things like arugula and kale um, are going to, and even collard greens are going to be lower potassium leafy greens compared to spinach. So you can always choose that if you want. But again, it doesn't mean just because spinach is higher in potassium that you can't consume it. It just comes down to what your individual needs are and then um, the portion that you're having. So just to summarize our three myths that we just debunked about potassium. Number one is that you have to restrict potassium just because you have kidney disease. That is not true. It's individualized. Um, Foods that are rich in potassium are actually very um, protective of the kidneys. They can help lower blood pressure. You want to know what your labs are, um, how much potassium you're taking in your diet, and then adjust your intake based on that. If your labs are staying perfectly normal um, and in a normal range, then you like don't have to restrict potassium in your diet. Um, Second myth is that you are on a potassium restricted diet and therefore you can't eat any high potassium foods. It's going to come down to the food, the portion, the frequency that you're having. And if you are on a potassium restricted diet and you love a very high potassium food, then work with your dietitian to figure out what portion can you consume and in what frequency that way it's safe for you to still have. And then myth number three is that cooking leafy greens like spinach increases the potassium content. And again, that's not true. It more comes down to the actual volume of leafy greens that you consume cooked because it cooks down so much. So if for the leafy greens, measure it raw, then you can cook it. And that's how you can make sure that you are not consuming too much potassium if you're on a potassium restricted diet. Again, um, those are our three myths for today. Check out our other two videos that Dr. Hashmi and I have on potassium. 
We dive into um, all sorts of things on what can raise potassium, what can lower potassium, treatments for high blood potassium, um, foods that are high and low in potassium, medications, and the impact that that can have. And so check out those channels. Um, please, if you can share this with your friends, family, subscribe to our channel, leave comments, um, questions that you have that you would like us to address in upcoming episodes. And you can always email us as well and let us know.